Hello, and welcome to this video. A month or so ago, somebody who viewed one of my other videos commented that American Flyer trains seem to always be running 100 miles per hour. This isn't necessarily an unfair observation. I know that the trains in many of my videos are running faster than necessary, and I noticed the same thing in some other videos. This led me to do some research to try to find a way to determine how 316 scale trains also referred to as 164th scale, would look when the speed on the layout is translated to real speed for that scale. I found a paper on this topic that was very scientific and included a mathematical formula that only a true mathematician could love. Sadly, that's not me. But I did find this website that has a calculating tool that is extremely helpful. I'm using this website and the calculating tool with permission from the administrators of this website. This website contains a lot of great resources, including printable buildings. Its URL shows modelbuildings.org, but in the full URL for the calculating tool, it's actually modelbuildings.org backslash scale-speed-calculator. It's really easy to use. In fact, it's so easy to use that I'll give a demonstration, even at the risk of insulting your intelligence. As you scroll down this page, you come to the calculator box. In the left-hand box, you can see a list of scales, some of which I've never even heard of. Of course, for this video, I'll select S scale 164. Most of us realize that gauge and scale are not the same thing, but the two do generally correlate to each other so I can see where the designers of this calculator listed it this way. Next, you pick the length of track you'll be timing. I'm able to set up a straight 60 inch section on my layout, and I think that's the best length for this scale if your layout allows for it. You can then measure the amount of time it takes for your train to run that distance and put that number in the top box on the right hand side of the table. For now, I'm going to put a 6 in that spot and click the Calculate button. As you can see in the lower section, that calculates to 36.36 miles per hour. You can also see the result in kilometers per hour if you prefer. Now let's put 5 seconds and you can see the result for that. Next, let's look at covering that 60 inches in 4 seconds. That would convert to 54.55 miles per hour. You can also put in tenths or hundredths of a second, as I'll show here. Moving along, three seconds is almost 73 miles per hour, and two and a half seconds calculates to about 87 miles per hour. Two seconds is really moving along at 109 miles per hour, and finally, one second calculates to 218 miles per hour. I'm not sure if that's possible with these trains. I'll now show some short clips of engines at various speeds, so you can get an idea of what some of these speeds look like. First, I'm going to run my 370 diesel with a load of six cars. This is going at a relative speed of 26.9 miles per hour, which seems to be really slow for this train. I'm having to adjust the transformer once in a while to keep it from stopping. Perhaps some of my other engines would handle this better, but this speed seems a bit slow for this engine. This is my 360 Royal Blue running at 32.73 miles per hour. Not a lot faster, but it runs very smoothly at this speed. Even though it runs well at this speed, I don't think it could go much slower. The next clip shows my 325 AC Hudson going at a relative speed of 46.5 miles per hour. This engine runs nicely at this speed, but it's a bit slower than I generally like to run it. Still, it's a realistic speed and the engine handles it well.
For the next clip, I'll return to the 370 diesel, this time running at 55 miles per hour. It runs really well at this speed. I tend to run it a bit more quickly, but I think this is a nice speed for this engine on this layout. Now back to the Hudson at 67 miles per hour. This might be fast for most freight trains, but I like this speed for many of my engines. I'd say I probably run my trains at a relative speed of 60 to 80 miles per hour, depending on the load and which loop it's on. I'm running these trains on my outside loop, which is pretty simple. The inside loop has more curves that are a bit tighter, so I might slow down for that loop. Now I'm going to show a passenger train pulled by my 290 Pacific going 84 miles per hour. That's not necessarily excessive for a passenger train, but it probably is fast for a steam engine. This is quicker than I would normally run this train. Keep in mind there are a number of variables that impact the speed of real trains and that also applies to model trains. The speed the trains are going in this video might vary a bit within the video and my timings might be slightly off, but I think it still gives you a good idea of each speed range. Continuing with passenger trains, I'm now showing a 360 Santa Fe diesel at 89 miles per hour. I like this speed for this train, but it might be a bit fast for a layout of this size. Still, it runs well at this speed, and I think it looks good at this speed. For the last clip, I'm going to run a 312 Pacific with no load. I'm going to run this full speed down that straight stretch to see what it can really do. Let's see if you can guess its relative speed. That was 125 miles per hour. That's just for show. I would never run trains that quickly. So what you do with this is totally up to you. I plan to run my trains according to what I think looks good and just use this calculator as a point of reference. As I see it, it's another tool that can add some fun to the hobby and I want to thank the people who developed this for putting it out there for us to use. I hope you have some fun with this and thanks for watching.